Hello, welcome. This night a handful is different, very different. Many stories move and collide in the dark night, guided by I. I am Mr. Saint. I have one name but hold many faces and walk upon the world in many places. Please be warned, these stories live in the dark. Only the brightest souls can make it through this night. I tell these stories because the darkness must be contained, packaged into smaller, easier parts. If you are still there, O oh brave watcher, let's begin. TV show. It's really a uh, sketch Am comedy. Am I on TV right now? Have you heard of Hampton before? It's a show. Hey man, heard of Handful before? Please just leave me alone. Hello and welcome to the Dark and Stormy Light Night Show with Mr. Saint. I'm your internal host, Mr. Saint. Tonight, I am joined by poet and storyteller, Storm and Sea, the wonderful Stephen Kinn, here to promote his new book, College Days at Hills Old Time. Thanks for joining us so much, Stephen. Of course, Mr. Stephen. <laughs> nice to be on. Yes, it's always a pleasure to have you on. We'd love to have you here. Um, let's just hop right into our question section. Please, uh, why don't you introduce yourself to the audience who might not know who you are? So, um, for copyright reasons, my name is uh, Stephen Kinn. Uh, with a silent G, um, and I am uh, an aspiring author uh, mm. that is uh, just creating some new, some new art for uh, people to read out there. Wow, wow, Stephen Kin, everybody, we love, we love that. Now uh, you're here tonight to promote your new book, uh, College Days: A Tale as Old as Time. Now, what is your new book? Um, well, College Days is an, an inspired story um, about uh, everyone's, uh, everyone's favorite time period in life. Um, it's about uh, College Days. And actually on the back, I have a bit of a, bit of a summary if you'd like to I read that. I see that. Yes, I yeah. do see that. Uh, I, will, I will read that summary for you. Uh, we're no strangers to love. You know the rules and so do I. Do I. A full commitment's what I'm thinking of. You wouldn't get this from any other guy. I just want to tell you how I'm feeling. Got to make you understand. Wow. Moving words, moving words there. Uh, mm -hmm. We love. It goes on from there. Lot, yes, lots of, yes. lots of uh, deep yes, emotional can, things. Yes, you can, of course, there. get the yeah. full description uh, when you buy the book, when um, it comes out. When yeah. does it come out? Um, it's actually, uh, it's coming out on April 1st. Yeah. Oh. Uh, on April 1st release date. Uh, we're, we're really trying to get there. Um, we're, we're just printing off the, cop up the copies and everything, getting everything ready to go wow. uh, for our Amazon release. So April yes. 1st should be our hard date, though. An auspicious day, auspicious mm -hmm. day. Indeed. Now, um, can you go into more detail of what this story is about? Um, yeah, so College Days is essentially just a, uh, a story about um, everyone's uh, time in uh, college. Uh, our, our, our hero, um, Stephen Kinn, um, yeah, that's, that's the hero's name as well. I made myself the hero of the book. Um, uh, he finds himself uh, trapped in a perpetual, uh, a per perpetual repeating day. Um, up and down a hill he goes, to classes he goes, um, and uh, you know, grades are passed out, some good, some bad, and he just has to deal with this, this, this crushing weight of, um, of the college experience. Uh, and I think it'll really hit uh, with, uh, with uh, high schoolers, just to <laughs> let them know uh, what's coming, honestly. Wow, wow, yeah. very Sisyphean. Mm. Uh, beautiful, beautiful use of Greek mythology there, Indeed. as well as modern stories. Now, can you uh, tell us a bit about your writing process for your stories? Yeah, so um, I like to bring my, uh, my laptop, right? Mm -hmm. I like to sit in a uh, quiet space, usually when it's storming out, right? Yes, beautiful time yeah, of day to and, storm. Um, I, I, I heat myself up a, a nice pot of tea, uh, have it right there sitting with me, steaming mm -hmm. up nice, and uh, I take the, computers, uh, the, the computer and I kind of just you know, bash my face mm. into the, the keyboard, um, and it just writes itself. It's a classic story, classic story. Mm. I have had many writer friends who use a very similar It's, it's a good method, it's a very strong yes. method. Yeah. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Now, can I ask, what drew you to this topic? 
Um, yeah, what drew me to this topic was really just uh, the, the, um, the crushing weight of college. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, just what happens uh, to students uh, when this happens, uh, and and I feel like this is a an experience that uh, people need to know about and feel, yes. um, and just uh, and if they if you're out of college, you know you need to feel it again because you just need to be reminded about uh, just what what a horror show it is. Mm. You know? yeah. Yes, yes. Oh, I remember my college days. Yeah, a lot so of do late I. nights and late mornings. <laughs> okay, moving on and connecting to that, uh, what goes bump in the night? So. Many things go bump in the night. Um, the original Sonic design from hit movie Sonic. Um, the, I remember the, that. Yeah, the, the crushing, the crushing uh, feeling of student loans. Mm. Um, the the feeling of ir irrefutable loneliness. Um, that time when you fell out of bed and got that boo boo on the elbow right there, and it stung real bad. Um, uh, yeah, those those are the things that I feel like go bump in the night. Mm -hmm. um, specifically that, that elbow. Injury. That elbow, yes. Elbow injuries, hitting that funny bone, always a bad time. Bad always time, a bad time. Bad time. Uh, now, if we can get a bit more personal now, um, not to put you out of your comfort zone, but of course. when you dream, are you the man or the mirror? Well, I think um, you're actually the frame of the mirror. Mm. Uh, you, um, you, you hold it up, you hold it together. Um, and uh, really, you contain what's inside, which is the image of yourself. So I think you're the, the mahogany frame on the outside. Yeah, but it's specifically mahogany. Specific yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. We're all little mahogany men. Yeah. Beautiful <laughs> sentiment there. We love, we love that from our, from our guests. We have to ask it to everyone, you know. But of course, of course. Yeah. Yes. Now, what does the title of your book mean? I know, obviously, College Days, A Tale as Old as Time. It may seem very descriptive in the beginning, but I'm wondering if there's any more deeper metaphors there. Yeah, um, I think that the deeper metaphor that I was trying to go for um, was just uh, the tale as old as time. Um, it's, it's, it's the day, you know, the day that repeats over and over mm. again. And then it comes to Saturday, and that's nice. And then Sunday comes, and you're like, oh, crap, i got to get up tomorrow. Yeah. So that's, that part sucks. But, but um, it's, it's the days, you know, that roll and roll. And um, the fact that uh, that time, that time slips away from us so mm. easily and so quickly without us even knowing. And uh, it's a tale as old as time because everyone goes through it and everyone experiences it. But uh, no one really is, is thankful for that time. Yes. Until it's gone. Yes. Yeah. You don't know what you got until it's gone. Indeed. The wise words of some singer somewhere. Now, why did you choose your name? Why did I choose my name? Um, well, uh, when I was uh, looking over the questions, I saw mm. that uh, it was horror based. And mm. uh, I looked up quickly um, horror novelists. And uh, I saw a name, and I just really wanted to make sure that it wasn't. Uh, wasn't at all um, uh, copyrightable, so mm -hmm. um, I, I just uh, you know deleted one letter at the end. That's yeah. very efficient. That's yeah. how we love to make up names. That's how we in do this it. household. <laughs> now, uh, mo moving back into the book, what surprised you about the writing and creating process for this book? Um, I think what uh, really uh, surprised me was uh, really how easy it was. You know, mm. um, everybody always talks about like writer block and everything like that, yeah. and I just kind of said no. Yeah, and poetry's just, easy. It, writing's easy. It's it's simple, honestly. You just you just you just kind of hit the keys and stuff comes up. I mean, I really don't see why more people don't do it. Mm. Honestly, yeah. yes, easy way to make money, you'd yeah. say. Yeah, all you gotta do is you know put that prompt into ChatGPT. <laughs> it's, it's all done. Yeah. So efficient. We right. love AI. Now, to talk about some future plans, um, things you want to do in the future. When the stars win their eternal war and the moon goes dark, what will you do? Yeah, so I think um, since the moon's going to be, you know, gone, um, I think I'm going to go for um, a nice dip in the ocean uh, since, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the moon and the waves have such a, um, such a relationship. Uh, the, the waves will be nice and calm, and I think I'm going to go and swim out uh, until, until I can't swim out anymore and just, mm. just think about life out on the waves. Wow. Yeah. What, a, what a poetic sentiment from a poetic author. Now, once again, Stefan, why don't you just tell us when this book comes out? Yeah, um, the book is releasing um, April 1st is uh, our worldwide release is what we're aiming for. Um, you can find it on Amazon as well as uh, bookstores. Um, you can find it in um, Barnes and Nobles as well as Blockbuster if you're looking for it there. Um, uh, we, we do actually have a release uh, lined up for Blockbuster, so we're mm. really excited about that as long as nothing goes wrong. As well as I'm thinking we also might release it in Toys R Us, so nothing could go wrong in those Very areas. Very not so, bankrupt yeah. uh, retail situations. Yeah. Wow. Well, thanks again for joining us, Stefan. Sorry about the night. Let's kick it to our house band, Old Life, New Death. And after that, another exciting... Wow. 
Wow, wow, wow! Welcome, welcome to our favorite show. Thank you, thank you. Welcome back to the only game show you can watch, Memento Noctis. I am, of course, your final host, Mr. Saint. I am joined this night by some folks hoping to make it to dawn. Please, introduce yourselves. Uh, I, I'm Chad B Wheelbarrow Jones of Northwestern Nebraska Technical College. My name's Addison. My name's Dayton. Wow, some lovely folks tonight. Let's hope, let's hope they can make it. Uh, now, before we begin, I will quickly go over these rules for those that are not in the known. Memento Noctis is a very simple game. There are 13 questions. Each will be a trivia question with free response. To sense contestants, will have five seconds to buzz in an answer. If they answer correctly, they get a point. If they get it wrong, someone else can try and steal. And if no one gets it right, we move on. Everyone understand? Good, let's get started. First question, please. Now, who is the queen of the underworld in Greek mythology? Somebody buzz in. Buzz. Beautiful, thank you. <laughs> Persephone? Persephone is correct. Thank you so much, Dayton. Uh, you know your mythology. Now, moving on to our second question here. What is the rarest blood type? I saw your hand first, please. O or O negative? That is incorrect. O you next. positive. That is incorrect. Final person. B positive. Incorrect. <laughs> the correct answer, the answer we were all looking for, was A, B negative. Uh, my favorite personally uh, when I have to see blood. Now, moving on to our next question. What is the name of the campus music building? Haas Fine Arts Center. Yes, you are correct, Dayton. Another point for Dayton. <laughs> Currently the only one with points on the board. Absolutely steamrolling it. Uh, we will quickly and fastly move on to our next question. How many shows is TV10 currently producing? Uh, I think I saw Mr. Sand here first. Mr. Chad Wheelbarrow yes, yes, Jones yes. of Northwestern Nebraska Technical Yes, our College. lovely contestant from Nebraska. It is currently four. Currently four is correct. Thank you, thank you. Somebody has studied up. Now, we'll quickly move on to our next question. What lake is the headwaters of the Mississippi River? Yes, Dayton. Lake Superior? Incorrect. Next person, you have to raise your hand or else bad things happen. Yes. That's not the question. And also, I've never been to Minnesota, so I don't care. Uh, next. You look surprised and aghast. You've never been to Minnesota? No, I've oh. only ever been here. It's like an hour away. I've only ever been here. In Eau Claire? No. Oh, Wisconsin? No, we're not in a Wisconsin or Eau Claire. Oh. Do you have an answer? Um, uh, uh, the Eau Claire River? No. Chippewa. What? It's a lake specifically as says well. says Mississippi. No, it says lake. <laughs> the answer we were looking for was <laughs> Lake Itasca, the headwaters. Beautiful lake, beautiful lake from what I've seen. Now, moving on to the next one. We actually have a celebrity guest to ask this question. Uh, we'll have him on now. Uh, where did horses come from? You have five seconds, yes. Good morning. Ugh. People are trying to do bits and it doesn't work because that will not help you survive. Moving on. The sky? No, not the sky. The egg first. Egg first? Horses are mammals. They don't come from eggs. The answer we're looking for is modern southern Russia. Now, moving on to our next question, numero seven. As the Spaniards say, how many bones does a human body have? Uh, I believe I saw Dayton's hand first. 206? That is correct. 206 is the number of bones a human body has. Most of those bones are located in your hands and feet. I learned Fun that fact. at technical college. I learned that through experience. <laughs> what? Now, moving on to number eight. How many dives must you take into the night before breaching the surface? Now, this is a difficult one, but you still only have five seconds. Uh, I believe you saw you first. In my experience, it's about five. Um, that is incorrect. Please. Thirteen? <laughs> Thirteen is also incorrect. Final answer. 
six and a half. That is incorrect. The correct answer was how many it takes. Now, moving on to number nine. How many witches were burned at the stake in colonial America? I believe I saw Dayton first. At least seven. That is incorrect. 165. That is incorrect. 273. That was also incorrect. The answer we were looking for was zero. Witches were hanged in colonial America and not burned at the stake. Now, moving on. This one should be real simple for you hollow heads. Uh, what is Frankenstein's first name? Mr. Victor. Chad. Victor is correct. Thank you so much for actually knowing something for once. Technical now, college taught me a lot. Yeah, technical college is real great. Uh, moving on to our next question. What is the mother's maiden name? Now this one is uh, difficult for a lot of the competitors, but we'll still give it to you. Yes. Jean. Incorrect. The mother's last name before it, they are married? No, that is incorrect. <laughs> yes. Your mom. No, I don't have a mom. The correct answer we're looking for is <laughs> Now, moving on to question 12. Question 12. Who is the author of Dracula? Five seconds, folks. Come on. You don't want to stay here in the dark. Ugh. We're out of time, unfortunately, on that one. The answer we're looking for is Bram Stroker. Bram Stroker is the author of Dracula. Moving on to our final question most serendipitous of them all. What holiday is the day after Halloween? Yes, Dayton. Um, All Saints Day? That is correct. We were also looking for All Hallows Day would have been accepted. Uh, good job, Dayton. You're the only one who got points. Uh, <laughs> Did now, I get points? No. Because no. cause I rule this land. Now, that's all for the questions. Thank you, and I'm sorry to my participants. I hope one day we may pierce the ocean. We'll be right back after these messages. Thank you for watching tonight. The day is near, you're almost at the dawn. Check out more TV10 stuff at myTV10.uwec.edu and TV10 social media. I have been, and will always be, Mr. Saint. Bye.